And good morning. Happy Saturday, September 5th, 2020. Uh, if you are in the States, other parts of the world, you are further ahead of us. But good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us here this morning. I'm Willie. If you uh, just happen to stumble upon uh, this live stream, uh, if you're a return viewer, subscriber, whatever, thank you so much for being here. I do appreciate all of you. And uh, no, I am not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not drunk or upset this morning. So um, I hope everybody's doing well. You see the title of the live stream today, and I am trying to get back into that habit of the Saturday morning live streams. So, oh, my face is red because the lighting in here, I'm still working on this. Um, and so it's a little bit of, of bad lighting and allergies. So there's a little bit of, uh, you know, having to breathe a little heavy. Um, so I'm, I'm probably got several things going on, but yeah, no, I definitely have not been drinking this morning. It's a little early for that, even for, uh, for a how. So, uh, so a couple things we're going to talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to everybody. We are closing in on the 60,000 subscriber mark. And that is amazing. If you've been with me, uh, since the beginning and you saw the very first videos, which are still out there and people still comment like, what's wrong with the sound? You know, at the very beginning of this channel, it was me and a notepad. None of, none of this interaction, no voice, just explaining how to do things. Um, and I can't believe, I mean, we're, you know, four plus years into it and I can't believe we're, we're here. So this is uh, thank you to everybody. I am so humbled by all of you every day. You have no idea. Oh, <clears throat> that's a great question. Blaine asks, any word on the DSM-7 release? So if you haven't checked out Synology DSM-7 and some of the things that they are kind of promising, um, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know if it's a total rewrite or what, but it is going to be amazing. Like raid rebuild times and stuff like that have gone from hours to minutes. There's all kinds of performance enhancements with the UI. Um, I can't even get in uh, on it when they opened it up for public beta. They had a lot of people join and they had to kind of rethink that a little bit because it's beta, right? So while somebody like me running it understands that I could lose all of my data and I'm not going to put it on a device where if I lose all my data, it's not important. You know, they see device metrics and things like that. They were like, okay, <laughs> we got to figure this out because I have a feeling that the, the people that were installing the beta, you know, people were installing it on live production systems. And, and one of the quickest ways to sync this ship would be to lose a bunch of data on a production machine, even though Synology says this, don't install this on anything you can't stand to lose all the data on. People are still going to do it. And then it's still going to be Synology's fault. And that's just how it goes. So I had heard, I told you all that to tell you this. I had heard that in, um, that we're close. I don't know how true that is, but I was, I had heard maybe Q4, um, end of Q3, which we're coming up on the end of Q3 in like, what, 26 days or something like that. So, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, as much as I know. So even as, as good of a relationship as I have, even my inside people here in the States have tried to get me into that DSM uh, beta and it has been unsuccessful so far. So it, uh, those, uh, those folks that got in, very lucky. Um, and I would love to get in on that beta, but, um, yeah. So if you've got any other questions, make sure you're posting those in the chat because I, you know, I do go through the chat and I do answer those, those questions. Morning, Sean. Sean's coming to us from the East coast. How's the weather over there this morning, Sean? All right. So, <clears throat> Alonzo Smith, uh, Alonzo, does that mean you are selling your um, RS2416 RP? He says he's going to post on Reddit. So if anybody, I think that's what that means. Um, Alonzo, if you can uh, clarify. Okay, so Alonzo Smith has an Iraq Station 2416 RP Plus available for sale. Alonzo, you can drop the details here in the top chat, the or the uh, live chat, and I won't uh, 
kick you out. But if anybody um, wants to uh, maybe purchase that, you can email me, fill out the contact form, and I'll make that connection between you and Alonzo. So, all right. Cambium, right? So I'm pretty excited about some of the stuff that we've got coming from Cambium. Um, I was on the Low Voltage Nation podcast back in August. Uh, it was like a, we went for like two hours. They had to cut it off. And uh, I introduced a lot of those guys to Cambium. And so I saw that uh, uh, some of them have started receiving some of their demo gear, like the uh, Wi-Fi 6 AP. Mine is supposed to be on the way. So that's something we're probably going to do live. Open it up, configure it, see what's going on. Sorry, I've got gum here this morning. Um, but uh, I, I really can't wait to get that. But in the in the meantime, Cambium has got a product that is meant for... Let me back this up. So a lot of times now in IT or other sectors, we're seeing a convergence of technology. Um, one of the first places we saw it was like, you know, VoIP, you know, where everything's converging and we're building converged networks. Everything's on the same wire. Uh, security cameras, you know, Axis invented the security camera. And so we've kind of had that uh, for a little while as well. Um, but what we're seeing... Um, as much as I don't want to get rid of this gum, I think I got to. It's distracting and all right, sound like a cow chewing my cud. So, uh, but uh, where was I? Oh, so uh, with security cameras, you know, that's a market where there are still a lot of uh, BNC connected, um, old school uh, CCTVs uh, out there, and as they're starting to upgrade, they're going to IP. Sometimes the installers are not network people. Sometimes the installers will buy some point to point gear. They throw it up. They don't necessarily understand the technology. And then you have, you know, issues with your video. Um, there's a couple companies that are tackling this. Uh, Cambium is, is one of the more, um, uh, notable Lego wave also has a solution for this, which, I don't have the Lego Wave uh, solution, but I do have the Cambium, and I'm super excited about this, and we're going to do a demo on it. If you do a, a YouTube search, Cambium did a little bit of a webinar on this, but I've got I've got a shed out in the backyard, and I need to put a security camera out there, and so we're actually going to use the point-to-point -point Cambium products, and I have to get this done before Thanksgiving, so it's it's coming up soon, but let me show you this, and they sent me two of these, and they can be used as point-to-point, point-to-multi-point, point, point depending on how you're setting up the network, but let me show you this. So it looks like a standard uh, Cambium uh, AP, but this is the CN Vision uh, product, and so the software that's running on these, these uh, APs they are specifically, it's specifically written to work with video traffic to optimize the connection for video, right? So um, let me pull up another, let me pull up a window here, which by the way, I want to show you this. When I booted up <laughs> the live stream rig, I was greeted with this. Welcome to the new, this thing is so intrusive. I don't know how many of you are also seeing this. But this thing, um, <laughs> this thing is crazy. It takes over your computer and like it, it just, Microsoft could have, I mean, I see this all the time and it just, it drives me bananas because they did not have to do this. But all right, so we are going to search for Cambium CN Vision. I just want to show you a little bit um, about this. And so it is specifically meant to work with video. So it, and it works, it actually integrates with your video uh, management system um, or your video management platform, whatever you're using. Now, it, right now it only integrates with uh, some of the higher end ones, but uh, I am definitely talking to them about getting uh, integration into Synology. So it's, um, it's, it's, a really nice solution for people that that 
want to deploy point to point, point to multi point for just um, for just video and don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, really learning about it. So uh, if you go out, check out CN Vision, and uh, it you know tells you that basically anything that is on VIF uh, compatible, it will work with. So um, and you can see all the, the big players as far as uh, cameras are right here. And the reason that they don't show a bunch of little brands is because Dawa and Hike Vision make a lot of other make a lot of other cameras. Between the two of them, I think Dawa and Hike Vision, I think that they um, I think they OEM for about 60 companies. So what uh, so like, you will see a lot of Bosch security cameras. Bosch does not make security cameras. Hike Vision, I believe, uh, makes the Bosch security cameras. In fact, we can Google that real quick. Uh, Hike Vision OEM. So in IPVM, they are an industry um, think tank for uh, video. And they put out, you can join their site and stuff like that. Somewhere I think I've got a code if you can check it out. But Hike Vision, and I talk about this a little bit in the video that I did a couple years ago when the federal government in the United States banned new installations of Hike Vision and Dawa cameras. But I mean, look at all these different brands that Hike Vision OEMs for. So you've probably seen some of these out in the field um, and didn't know that it was actually a Hike Vision camera. You know, like Dunlop. I'm used to them making golf balls and I think tires and belts and stuff. But apparently, <laughs> apparently they sell security cameras. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should get a Willie Howe uh, security camera that's like a, you know, an OEM from another company. I don't know that I would do Hike Vision. Uh, they do Honeywell, uh, Hyundai, uh, some pretty popular names. So it might be Dawa that does the other ones. Sharp, uh, Trendnet. Syscom, Toshiba. So you can see, uh, let's do a Dawa uh, OEM list. By the way, I am embarrassed to be using Bing this morning. Sorry about that. It's just default, and Microsoft shoved this browser down my throat. So um, let's see here. All right, so here's the Dawa, right? So Dawa makes, uh, let's see. They say that Dawa makes Amcrest. That's interesting. I can kind of see it. I didn't know, but for some reason, I don't. I don't know that that's right. Does anybody know? Put it in the comments. But I'm not 100% sure that Dawa actually OEMs Amcrest cameras. I que I question that. I question that, and it's because I don't know. But definitely, uh, Bosch is not. They they're not making their own. I mean, look at all these these different brands, you know, some of them we've heard of, some of them we haven't. I question, I question the Amcrest. Um, but I will tell you that Dawa makes, makes a decent camera, you know, but uh, in places where you can't use Hike Vision and Dawa because of regulations, you've got to have other brands. And that's where we were looking at, well, Axis is our number one go-to. We've got the Rio Link and we've got the Amcrest. We've been, uh, so the Amcrest thing now has me kind of, question that so i'm gonna have to get some i'm gonna have to get some uh clarification on that so here is the dawa let's see and i don't see amcrest on this list which doesn't mean anything but if somebody knows please put it in the comments um adt uh yeah, bosch honeywell panasonic but, uh, you know, the, if you can use Dawa cameras, I mean, they they make a decent camera. Hike Vision makes a decent camera. I've been looking at the Hike Vision doorbell. I reached out to them to see if I could get a doorbell um, to, to play with to see what the, the difference is between their doorbell. Uh, the one thing that I didn't see when I was looking at the Hike Vision doorbell was, is it on VIF compatible? It, it, I don't know if it is. So it's, it's one of those interesting things. But back to Cambium. And they support more than two um, VMS systems, but it's it's um, it's a really neat product. I did an overview with with a tech and with the uh, one of some of the sales guys and my media guy, 
And I'm just like, you can, you can like see the quality of the, um, of the connection, first of all, which you can always do that, but you can see the quality of the camera. You can interact with the streams right from the, um, right from the platform. It's, it's very, very interesting. So I can't wait to get this hooked up. I've just got to figure out all the logistics, like, uh, where I'm going to, you know, drill in to the, uh, into the house, mount all this stuff. So I just want to make sure that I'm doing it right the first time. And so that I don't drill a bunch of needless holes in the house. Um, but I think you, um, will definitely, um, I think you will definitely be surprised by this. Um, all right. So that's what I wanted to talk about with, with Cambium. And I think it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a great product. And Sean is, uh, talking in the comments about how a good amount of people are moving away from UI. Yeah, they absolutely are. Um, and what's funny is, uh, in Tom Lawrence's live stream or one of his videos that he just did, he, uh, talked to, uh, he threw an invite out to Robert Para, uh, from Ubiquity. Uh, that's the CEO. Now I know Robert probably knows who we are because I think he has to approve, uh, us as, uh, content creators, uh, getting some of that. So content creation is only a part of what I do. It's, you know, part of my, my marketing and part of just giving away the knowledge, to help train people and get people out there. But I mean, he has to approve any of that gear I think that's sent to us. So, um, he, um, you know, I think he knows who we are, but so Tom gave him a shout out and said, Hey, you know, maybe we could interview you. And I told Tom, I said, the internet will melt down if you get to do an interview with uh, Robert Para. So a few years ago, as a joke, I was actually going to call Robert Para out. And uh, because he's a big basketball guy, I was going to challenge him to a charity game of horse. Uh, but I guess if, if somebody sees that, I would challenge him to a charity game of horse, um, especially now there's a lot of places that, that need help and a lot of places that are hurting. We could do something where we raise donations from the community here and then Robert could, could match them. Um, obviously, he's probably going to beat me in horse, but how cool would that be for you all to be able to watch a live stream or even a video, ask your questions, we're playing horse, um, we're raising money for charity. How awesome would that be, right? So we like satiate like 15 community needs <laughs> um, with, with one project. I think that'd be pretty cool. So if he does the interview with Tom, I definitely want to challenge him to a game of horse. So Robert Para, if you're out there, if one of your people's watching, I challenge you to a charity game of horse. You know how to find me. You know where I'm at. I don't know where you're at. I don't know how to find you. We live completely different, uh, lifestyles and expectations, but, um, I will tell you that I'm pretty good at the no jump, uh, free throw. So, uh, uh, if you're doing a lots of layups and no dunking, I'm putting that out there in the public. You can't dunk. Um, if we get into this, this celebrity, uh, not celebrity, but this, uh, charity, uh, horse challenge. If you take me serious and we, we set this up, uh, you can't dunk layups. Okay. Except left-handed. And here I am giving away all my secrets. The point is Robert Para, I challenge you to a charity, um, game of, of horse. And we'll figure out the details if you accept. So, um, I think it'd be pretty cool if you did. All right. So yeah. So, uh, Bob asked layer two bridge optimized for video. What does that really mean? Op optimized for video installers. It's a little bit of a little bit of both. Yeah. Uh, good morning, quick tech solutions. All right. People are retracting messages here. Um, yeah. So, uh, what else do we want to talk about this morning? Oh, uh, yeah. So the UDM people want to know what kind of pro problems we've had with the UDM. So early on this year, when everybody was loading up, uh, VPN users, we saw the VPNs become extremely unstable. We still got that bug. Um, and Sean helped me out here. I'm not sure if this bug is specific to ubiquity or if it's specific to just IPsec, road warrior VPNs in general, but you couldn't have two people from the same natted IP coming in. Only the first person would be able to connect. It's a, it's an Achilles heel of, of the ubiquity routers, whether it's the edge router, whether it's the USG. Um, so people were having an issue with that. Uh, and, and so, uh, somebody else wanted to know, what are you moving to? We put in a lot of Synology units, whether it was the router or whether it was a NAS. And then we use the open VPN client because it, I mean, it's solid. It's awesome. 
He does everything we want. Um, and for as little as, you know, $135, you can have a VPN server for up to five people. Now, obviously, if you want more than that, you've got to have larger hardware, but it's a platform that, that, uh, you know, gets constantly updated. And Sean says that he doesn't think that that issue is resolved. And I don't think that it is either. So, um, yeah, the UDM Pro uh, it just has done some funny things. Now, 1.8 uh, has improved the reliability, the stability, and some of those issues. One thing that uh, we really need in the UDM that I can't find, and Sean, help me out here, if if I'm just not understanding where it's at, but the switch that's in the UDM Pro does not have spanning tree. So... I, that seems to me to be a little bit of an issue depending on how you're going to build out your network. So I've got a customer in Aspen that has a huge house, a 10,000 square foot house. And we're running, he's got the UDM pro, which was you know purchased before we started consulting, but they started having some issues. So then they, they bring us in, but then they've got, you know, an eight port switch, a 24 and a 48 port switch. And they want to be able to set up the network, you know, uh, in basically a a topology that allows, you know, the network to keep going if there's a link failure, if there's a switch failure and things like that. And I'm looking at it going, well, in theory, your last switch should block the port, but what's going to happen with the UDM Pro? So there were some unknowns, so we decided to try to um, design around that. So, uh, yeah, Sean, are we addressing the no spanning tree or did I miss something on that? And James uh, is absolutely right. We are using also a ton of GWN 7000s, which is the Grand Stream router. Those things are awesome. They're very inexpensive. And the OpenVPN that is on those, is uh, they automatically spit out all the info we need to plug into a remote phone. So while on the 6300 series of UCMs, it'll be coming out at some point, you're going to see this remote work service. Um James and I have already perfected remote work with Grandstream based on current current product. So uh, if if you've got questions about that, you can let us know. But uh, we definitely are already doing remote work with Grandstream, and it, and it works. So yeah, OpenSense is awesome. OpenSense is our go to for uh, open source firewall on the Protectly hardware. So Bob asks, any commercial 802.11ax, which is Wi-Fi 6, hit my radar yet? So besides the stuff I can't talk about, uh, so uh, Netgear, I think, has got something coming. Um, So we'll have to see about that. Uh, For sure, Cambium is sending me over their solution. And um, we're definitely going to be testing it. I'm going to have to upgrade phones and stuff like that. So um, a lot of the devices that we're seeing, so you can get some laptops now that have built-in Wi-Fi 6, but a lot more of the newer uh, cell phones have Wi-Fi 6. So it's a really, cell phones are always a good testing platform for us. And so like my accountant is probably like, why do you have all these cell phones? Because they're not all active. But when we're designing networks for a client that has a 10,000 square foot house, you know, and... um, in Aspen, you know, when we're designing these networks for large churches that have to do, um, you know, where we're setting up high density networks and things like that, we have a lot of devices that we test here in the lab to see what kind of issues that we're going to run into. So, I mean, we've got all kinds of test gear. Now, uh, Ubiquiti and Cambium and Lego Wave and all these companies that are designing this stuff, they've got some pretty impressive test racks too, like racks that can like emulate like hundreds of, of clients. And there were some pictures posted a few years ago, and I would love to do something like that. I think you could do it with Raspberry Pis. The question is, how do you control all of that software at one time? You know, so um, if anybody's got any ideas about that, I'd love to see it. But yeah, uh, OpenSense is is absolutely fantastic, and we're using a lot of OpenSense. Um, I'm actually working with a pretty large uh, manufacturer. If I said the manufacturer's name right now, I, I can't 
say anything besides the pro- the project, but you all know who this manufacturer is, and they reached out, and their Europe their Europe office is having some network redesigns that they want done. They got some specific things for building access controls. And so they were going to go with Ubiquity, but the way that they want the access controls to work, we can't really make it work with edge routers or with, well, I, I take that back. We can't make it work with USGs. We could make it work with edge routers, but if you're not familiar and you don't use the CLI and stuff like that, then it becomes a management nightmare. So I'm actually proposing protectly boxes with open sense and a huge mesh VPN. But the nice thing about open sense is that for like 150 bucks, 199 bucks, something like that, you can get a software package that allows you to manage all of your open sense boxes, no matter where they're at from one console. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, let's see here. My phone is blowing up. Uh, let's see here. Not literally, but, um, see all right so yeah it's absolutely I, I'm really excited about that that project um, and another thing that we need to watch I'm uh, prepping a config for protectly and protectly is actually putting together a couple different packages that are going to be like the Willy how technology packages so when you go buy that there's going to be special pricing um, one is a four port protectly. And like, usually when they ship it to you, there's no config on open sense. I'm actually providing a default config. It's going to have a specific network on it. And the reason that I'm doing that is that so that, uh, users that don't want to ship me the hardware can request the Willy how kit from, uh, protectly. And when it shows up, I already know what the IP is going to be, the username, password, so that, you know, providing that support and hitting the ground running with that. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. Efficiency for the end user, ease of use for the end user. So we're doing that. There's also going to be a second uh, Protectly package that comes with the rack mount kit and the UPS and a, and an appliance. So uh, we are working through the details on that. In fact, I think they're just waiting for me to get the config. So that's one of the things this weekend that's on my list. But I've actually got uh, my OpenSense box hooked up, uh, working on it for another client where we're doing Mac uh, Mac controlled VLANs and we're using a Cambium uh, access point that Cambium sent the client for free to, to try this and then he shipped it over here. I've got it hooked up going directly to OpenSense box and then based on Mac address of the device, we've only got one SSIE but then we're putting you into um, a different VLAN based on Mac. So that's something that I'm testing and as soon as I'm done with that, then that'll get done. I've got a lot of phone system stuff to shore up and get shipped out next week. So uh, people ask me, why do I use OpenSense versus PFSense? And there's a lot of things that go into it. I like the fact that OpenSense gives, uh, they do a lot of incremental updates, um, whether it's security updates, performance updates, things like that. Their communication with the, with the community is a lot better, in my opinion. So there's the communication piece. But if I... If I go out and I do a social media post on me using PFSense on Protectly hardware, like people from the PF set, PFSense camp will come out and they'll start blasting my posts. They're very derogatory. Um, they're very argumentative. They Really, they their point is they only want you to use their hardware, right? And uh, But it's an open source product. I mean, there's, and then if you ever look at some people and there are some people that are, that don't fall into this, but when we talk about this elitist attitude towards people, I mean, like the PF sense community, some of the people that drive that community, um, their people skills need a lot of work. The open sense community is not like that. They, they want to help you. And so I would rather, um, align myself with that. Uh, also the other reason that I use open sense is, uh, we can have a conversation directly, you know, with the developer. We don't get that, that elitism. I like the, the user interface much better. I just like the whole package a lot better. It's not to say that I don't use PFSense because I do support a lot of PFSense boxes, but, uh, the open sense, the, the, just the whole package is much more attractive. Um, you know, for me. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see if open sense did a PF blocker, uh, equivalent, I consider. Bob, I think you need to go check out OpenSense and the plugins. I think you're going to find um, that uh, OpenSense can do everything that PFSense can. And we can we can have a, uh, a conversation about that. So Sean, um, 
Let's see. Sean says, I see STP, but not seeing LACP on my test network for the UDM Pro. Sean, is that on the 1.8, um, the 1.8 uh, firmware? Because I had my client upgrade to 1.8, but I didn't see it. So maybe it's somewhere that I'm not, um, maybe it's somewhere that I didn't notice it. All right, so... The other thing is QNAP is, is uh, we're forming a relationship with QNAP. Now, Synology, you know I'm all in on Synology. Um, I've also got, we talked about last week, that TerraMaster. Let me grab that TerraMaster real quick. Oh, ow. Ah. All right, all right. I'm coming back. Oh. All right, so uh, I have the TerraMaster as well. So I'm going to do some uh, photos of all of these things lined up together. So this is the TerraMaster F2210. So let me pull that up. I want to thank TerraMaster for sending that over. I've got to get the, uh, the video done on that. But let me, TerraMaster F2210. That's hilarious. So there must be a tire of some sort with the same, um, <laughs> with the same, <laughs> that's hilarious. And I don't know if this is the four bay or the two bay without taking it out real quick, but let's see here. Terra master. I think it might be the two disc. Uh, Sean, thank you for answering the question about that. We will, uh, I will definitely get back with, with the client. I didn't see it on mine either. So this um, TerraMaster F2210, is this the two bay or the four bay? Excuse me. Um, it doesn't say. Let's open it up real quick. Let's see. Oh, it's definitely, it's the two bay. Uh having a hell of a time getting it out of the package here. Let's see. All right, hold on. Okay. All right, so. Holy cow. So here's the Terra Master. Uh, the Terra Master, this is the two, the two disc. So, uh, you can see, I mean, a lot of these kind of look the same. Hard drive one, hard drive two. So then on the back, you've got LAN, power, USB. You've got a big fan. Look how that much that fan sticks out on that thing. This thing must, must get hotter than hell. The bottom, like a cheese grater. But uh, so if we go back real quick to the spec on this, the two-bay NAS, it's got an ARM uh, V8 quad-core 1.4 gigahertz CPU with one gig of RAM, and it is stuck at one gig. Apparently we cannot upgrade this. Now they have, uh, their operating system and it's very much more, um, I don't know when you, when you see this, we're going to set this up. We're going to use this. The Terra master may work fine for some people. Uh, I am going to, like I said, give it, I'm going to give it a, a thorough run through. We're going to look at the interface and all that stuff. So back to NASA's, so, you know, QNAP, I'm starting to form a, a relationship with them. Uh, and so they've sent me some stuff, and they're sending me their new ZFS-based NAS. So if you haven't seen that, they're going to send that over so that we can take a look at it. Uh, by the way, thank you to Lenovo for providing this machine that we are uh, streaming from. But uh, QNAP also sent me, I've got a NAS right now, uh, that I'm going to be testing. You're going to see a video on it that has uh, 2.5 gigabit LAN connections. Um, I've also got a new Synology product that you're going to see uh, that I've, I've got to get the video uh, ready for that. But I'm super excited about that. But back to Synology. So they sent me that NAS. They're sending me the new uh, ZFS-based NAS. But they also sent me, you saw the QNAP switch. Uh, they sent me... 
this uh, 10 gig unmanaged switch, and they also then sent me the 10 gig adapter. So we're going to hook this up. And how I think I'm going to test this is instead of having um, instead of having one machine that's got 10 gig, right? Which we could do. We could do multiple machines with 10 gig. But like for a small office, I think it makes more sense to have the 10 gig NAS and then have a 10 gig switch, but then see how many one gig, um, how many one gig clients can uh, pull from that 10 gig network connection, right? So can I effectively transfer 10 gigs from the NAS to multiple devices? I think that's a much better test because uh, for the offices that these types of devices are really um, geared towards, we're probably not going to have 10 gig to every machine or we're going to have a laptop, you know, that's only got a one gig. Cause you can get, you can get these uh, USB C 10 gig adapters. Um, let me see 10 gigabyte adapter. You can get these, but they are like crazy expensive. I think that they're expensive. Like, um, I don't think I'm going to pay $149.96 or $149 for a 10 gig USB adapter. Call me crazy. Um, but I think more likely, you know, it's the whole, it's like the whole Wi Fi 6 thing, right? Is your infrastructure ready for Wi Fi 6? Are your clients ready for Wi Fi 6? Probably not. And there's a lot of places that are not going to run out and hurry up and upgrade, you know, all of the stuff um, to, uh, you know, put 10 gig in everywhere and, and every, you know, I mean, that's, it's a cost of doing business. Yes. But if it's working and it's efficient, why upgrade it right away? I mean, those of you who run businesses know that every six months we don't rebuild our networks. It's just, it doesn't work that way. So I think a much better test of that NAS is going to be 10 gig to a 10 gig switch, but then one gig out to the clients. Does that make sense? You all are pretty quiet in the comments. I thought there'd be more questions um, on it than that. But the other thing that I'm really excited about that Synology also sent me, if you haven't seen the news, Synology released their own branded M.2s and SSDs. And so what I've got, and they've already had their own branded RAM for a while. And for those of you who are running non-Synology uh, memory in a Synology, you know you get that message that tells you, hey, you're not running Synology memory. Um, but there's a lot of people that don't run Synology memory. So here is a Synology. This is the uh, SNV3400. This is a 400 gigabyte M.2 uh, 2280 NVMe SSD, right? So those, this is the basically the caching drive. Now at some point, and I and I don't know any more than you know, but at some point it would not surprise me if Synology or QNAP or somebody comes out with a NAS that runs completely on these M dot M dot twos. So there's a shot of that. I want to thank Synology for sending this out. So this is actually going to go in into the new server that they sent me as uh, as my caching drive. They actually sent me two. So it's going to go in there. Um, we're going to talk about me upgrading from multiple Synology NASs to a single Synology uh, NAS. So, yeah, Bob, the uh, logo for TerraMaster does look really close to Cooler Master, and I've always wondered how they get away with that. <laughs> so... Um, you know, that was one thing. Uh, I think I might have talked about it a little bit, but I actually have the uh, United States trademark for my logo. Let me let me grab it and show you real quick. Um, so if you're in business, and this is a video that I'm going to do, and I've been um, uh, mentoring and talking to a lot of small businesses lately. Um, so whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent. I mean, I'm super happy that, that people have, um, reached out to me. Um, so this is the official, um, uh, 
uh, trademark for my logo. And it, you know, it shows the logo, United States of America. It gives the registration number, the date it was registered. Now, it took me the better part of a year to actually get this. Um, and, and what it does is it, it says it's a service mark. It's a principal register. And it's a class 42 for computer networking configuration services, computer network design for others, computer security consultancy, internet security consult consultancy, technical support services, uh, namely troubleshooting of computer software problems, uh, first used in commerce, and then it gives the date as when I first used the new logo. And then it says the mark consists of a stylized letter H design that features a variety of lines and dash lines appearing inside the upper part of the H. So no matter what color these are, if it's in this pattern, then uh, you would be infringing on my, my um, trademark. And then it's got the gold seal down here from the director of the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And then it talks about, you know, the registration and, you know, second filing and, you know, how you have to maintain this to make sure that you own the trademark. And then um, it, they also provide like a, a sample of a cease and desist letter. And they give you all of those, those good things. If you're in business and you've got a logo and you're building a brand, one thing you need to do, no matter what country you're in, well, I guess, first of all, your country, if they support uh, trademarks and copyrights and things like that, that's something that you should definitely um, look into because it is, it's worth every penny to protect your brand. Um, and I don't know, uh, I've never checked on any of my competitors or anything like that. I don't know if they have their, their stuff, but they definitely, they definitely should. Um, so lessons learned the hard way. That might be like what I, what I call the, some of these, these videos. But then the other thing that I have, which I'm super excited about is this, and this is the, uh, SAT 5200, 1920 gigabyte, uh, 2.5 inch SATA SSD for Synology servers. So Synology now has their own SSDs. As far as I know, they don't have their own spinning drives. Uh, but if they did, I would definitely try it out. So I'm probably going to make these like my two drives because right now, you know, I run the 620 Slim uh, for my business. And I'm going to talk about that very soon in a video. Um, if you do business with me, you know that uh, depending on how many hours you buy and what kind of a relationship we have, you have a login for my Synology. Um, there's a spreadsheet, a folder where we keep files and we keep everything on our infrastructure here. Everything is encrypted and backed up to Synology C2. It's also backed up to another Synology device. Um, and very soon we are going to have a server in a data center in Utah on a 10 gig connection, which I'm, I'm pretty excited about. Now here is the actual uh, SATA drive. These things are sexy. If, if I can use that word about a, uh, an SSD, very thin, very thin, very sleek. It feels like there's two gigabytes or two terabytes in this thing. This thing has is, is got some heft to it. Um, I'm really excited. So I'm probably going to make these my main data drives for all my client stuff. And then I'm going to consolidate some of my spinning disks for bulk storage. Um, and then it's going to allow me to rework my surveillance station setup. So I'm super excited about that, but you're going to see, you're going to see this other unit that they sent me. Um, if you want to look, look it up, it's the 1621 XS plus, um, and then I also have another um, uh, external uh, storage cabinet to go along with it. So I'm, I'm like I said, I'm pretty excited about that. So those videos are going to be coming up um, pretty soon. Now, um, let's go to the comments real quick. Bob said, never seen that when he used the Crucial Memory Kits. Where does it show up? So, Bob, it'll show up in the Notification Center, and you may also get an email depending on whether you've got notifications set up or not. So, um, you'll have to, to check that out. Now, I think that's it. That's it for all the products and everything that I wanted to show this week. Uh, I've got one video, uh, that I'm going to do this weekend that is on surveillance station. Um, I'm going to get that out and then we're going to do more of those, but then I have to finish my UC 3200 series so that I can get that box shipped back to Synology. And, um, is the live stream, uh, is it still there? Is it cutting out? 
So I just redid my network and did, um, I did, uh, I, I put a, a UDM in with a flex and I've been having some slight issues with it. Uh, so it's a standard UDM. And then I also have the, um, like I said, the, 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 uh, flex HD, I've been having some issues. Uh, so I'm thinking I'm, I keep seeing the stream pause. Can you all tell me if you're seeing the stream pause, but, um, let me know in the comments because that's kind of, uh, I've noticed some issues. So I might have to dig in and do some, some troubleshooting that, or take the ubiquity stuff back out and switch back over to grand stream or back over to, uh, cambium. No, everybody says the stream's fine. Okay, so it's just pausing on my side. Okay, that's cool. Um, it kind of throws me off when I'm watching the comments and the stream, and it starts like circling, and then I'm I'm seeing that my stream over here on the streaming PC is still streaming okay. So, um, but anyway, yeah, you're gonna see a lot of of the surveillance station stuff, and it's. I know that there are companies out there that are using surveillance station the way that I'm going to show you, but there's a, for those of you interested in surveillance station, there is a lot, a lot that you can do with it that a lot of people don't know. And it works really great if you just take it out, set it up. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the, the cameras and all that. Um, I didn't really have anything else. We went through some of this stuff as, as a, a lot quicker than what I thought we were going to, but, um, if you've got any questions, make sure you put them in the comments. Unky Joe is here. So good morning, Unky Joe. We still need to get together on that, uh, email that I sent you. And do you all want to see this 10 gig switch real quick? Let's, uh, take this 10 gig switch. This is the QNAP. Um, and we are, we are literally, we've got a, a couple things where we've got to do some comparisons but there are going to be some videos and I'm so just so you know, what I'm trying to do is uh, get some series filmed and get them together. That way the, the lag, you've noticed there's some latency in me getting the, the videos out and I'm trying to overcome that, that latency and, you know, make sure that I'm getting those two videos a week and all that. So it's, uh, things are just a little crazy right now, but what would life be in 2020 without a little madness, right? Uh, this thing must get kind of warm, obviously, because they tell you to remove this plastic before use. This is an unmanaged 10 gig switch. And so on the front, you can see we've got uh, three SFP pluses and then a 10 gig copper port. So these are all SFP plus ports. And then there's a 10 gig copper port here, but then these are all gigabit. So I'm going to use this switch when we uh, test. Oh, this is so that actually that RJ45 port is multi G combo. So this this uh, copper port down here uh, will do 2.5 5 gig, and I'm assuming it will do 10 gig as well. I'm going to have to look in the uh, marketing materials. Let's see if we can find it here real quick. Um, if anybody knows off the top of their head, if when they say multi gig, if it goes all the way from, yeah, so this one does. So, oh, that's interesting. So it is multi. I'm looking at the, um, the book right here. There's a little table that tells us about that port and that port says that depending on the light, it's operating at five gig, 2.5 gig, one gig or hundred megabits. So that, even though that that's lumped in with the SFPs, it will only do up to five gig, which is, I mean, it's not horrible. One thing that cracks me up is look at the power where the power adapter goes. There's this, <laughs> this huge circle for the power adapter. Um, and then on the bottom of this, there are some pretty uh, nice actually mounting Mounting, so the you know, screw can go here, 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 here. So it's got multiple uh, mounting options, which I really like. I really like that. Uh, let's see what the... Uh, I've never seen the... Oh, my gosh. Hilarious. I've never, I've never taken the... Um, I never took the power, the AC power out. Check that out. Let's see what happens. We just... That is so cool. 
you plug that in there and then oh here's what i check that out right so whichever orientation then i need the power cord to come off of that it's the little things in life that make you the happiest right and not being stuck one way or the other with that power cord that is that is happiness right there that is awesome i really like that um, it is unmanaged, so we do have to watch and make sure that we don't uh, create any loops. In a small office where we manage that, it should be pretty easy to ensure that we don't create any loops. Um, yeah, and wait a minute. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Bob, you said that, and um, uh, you're absolutely right, Bob is that I missed it. So if it's an if it's amber, so if that port is amber, that means it's 5, 2.5, 1 gig, or 100 meg. If it's green on the RJ45, I don't know if y'all can read that or not. If it's green, that means it's negotiated at 10 gigs. So we are going to be able to backfeed 10 gig uh, into that. So I'm going to have to look. Let's open up the, let's open up the 10 gig card. All right, let's see here. Um, we'll see what kind of connector we have. Oh, I'll bet you it's copper. I bet you this bad boy. Is, oh, yeah, it is. And I've got some uh, Cat6 cables that we can use for this. Let me um, try not to drop this on the the floor out of the package so this is 10 gig copper which i like i like it when i don't have to mess with sfps always and oh oh this is okay sweet so this oh i'm sorry so this is i wonder if that nas has 10 gig built into it so this tells me on this if it's uh, it's 2.5 gig, if it's green, it's 1 gig or... Wait a minute, does this card not do 10 gig? Uh, no, this card must not do 10 gig. Hold on a second, let me find the propaganda. Let's see, network expansion card. Interesting, so uh, the model number on this is, let's see, it is uh, QXG dash 2G 1T. Um, so I'm thinking that the two in that probably should be a should probably be an indicator for us. Um, block. There's the ten gig. Okay, so yeah, so this one will only do two point five only, right? That's hilarious. Uh, but we, I mean, and why I say that's hilarious is because only two gig, because we've, it's you know, multi gig became a thing years ago and we're just really starting to see um, see it come to the masses you know outside of of you know what you would traditionally consider let me grab this QNAP NAS because now you've all got me wondering um, I know that the the ZFS one that they're sending me I know that it does uh, 10 gig but the one that they sent me, let me grab it real quick. Stay here. Don't move. I'll be right back. I just have to open this door. I just have to open the door and grab the NAS. Don't go anywhere. All right, I got it. I got it. Still there? All right, so here's the NAS they sent me. It's a two-bay TS253D. So this has 0.5 gig ports and PCIe port for diversified storage applications. So if this is anything, so I'm not going to be able to test the 10 gig with this. 
I'll be able to test it with the Synology and I'll be able to test it with, um, I'll be able to test it with the new ZFS NAS that they're sending me. But what I should be able to do in theory, if uh, they have the adaptive load balancing, just like Synology has, is I should be able to then take this and put two connections in. I'm going to have to figure this out because I've only got one copper port, right? But I should be able to take two connections from this and have an aggregate five gig, which will still give us a really good test of this little this little NAS. Um, and then we'll just have to see, we'll have to see how that all works out. So, um, uh, you know, yeah, my wife says you're still small. Yeah, I haven't gained back um, all the weight yet. So I would like to appreciate, uh, you know, I appreciate my wife for pointing out that I'm, I'm still small. So yes, I've not had to buy a new pants yet. Thank you, dear. Everybody say hi to uh, Mrs. Howe. She's in the chat. And, uh, all right, what else do we have here this morning? That's all the hardware I really wanted to talk about. I am taking podcast guests, um, coming up. I am setting aside dedicated time for the podcast. I already have it guy Rye out of Chicago who used to be known as the immature dad, uh, which, um, he is, uh, an active directory, uh, specialist. He's uh, getting into the security side of things. I've got him. I've got, uh, uh, Barry from think easy it. I think Sean has, uh, committed to, um, um, I think Sean has committed to being on the podcast. I am trying to get former ubiquity employees on the podcast. Um, if you are interested in being, the, uh, on the podcast and, you know, let me know. It, it, you don't have to necessarily, uh, be a specialist or anything like that. Cause we're going to talk about all kinds of things, networking, voice over IP, wireless security. Um, basically you're going to have a drink of your choice. I'm going to have a drink of my choice and we're going to talk for an hour and, uh, hopefully, uh, there'll be minimal editing. Cause I think we can keep it interesting for an hour, but, uh, it's, uh, I, I just can't wait to, I, I I really want to engage with you all like that. So we got to get that going. Um, what else is for today? Uh, that, I mean, September's here and September will be gone before we even know it. So it's, it's going to be crazy. You know what, you know what the problem is with my laptop? Why I'm seeing such a lag here is because it's like two minutes behind in the live stream. And, uh, that's definitely, <laughs> No wonder, like, I'm confused watching back and forth. But that's kind of all I had for the uh, the products today. If there Are there any other questions? If you've got questions, put them in the comments. I do see a, a question. Why aren't Synology at least putting SFP cages in their latest NASs? Um, that's a good question. I don't have an answer for that. That is, uh, you know, would you all, if I could get somebody from Synology on a live stream or whatever, uh, would that be awesome too? So we could definitely talk about talk about that. My laptop is definitely um, not behaving. The live stream is like buffering like crazy. Um, so I'm hoping that you're at least putting your questions in there. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, Sean says YouTube's not letting him type. So something must be going on with that. So let me see. Uh, Sean sent me a tweet. Oh, that's hilarious. So Sean is on the treadmill making me feel bad about my <laughs> Sean's making me feel bad about my choices this morning. So I'm going to sh- Sean, uh, I'm going to show, <laughs> I'm going to show this tweet, but Sean says, this is the best way to watch a Willie Howe, uh, the best way to watch a live stream. And so he's on the treadmill, hitting the treadmill. He's got the TV there. Oh, Sean. Yeah, I got to, um, I definitely got to, we got to get to start walking again, but that's, that's hilarious. Um, So, you know, and I want to have Cambium folks on. I've got really big aspirations for the podcast. Um, I know that it's going to serve a a certain niche, and that's fine because, you know, we serve a a certain niche here. So uh, Simon says, one gig is my reason for not buying the latest Synology. So definitely, I mean, they do have 10 gig copper interfaces, and they actually do have a PCI card that you put in that provides those SFP cages. So, you know, if you're, um, you know, if you're 
interested in Synology, any of those um, uh, units where you can put the the expansion card in. Let me pull that up. Synology expansion card. Because we use these all the time. Um, let's see. This one's specifically for the Flash Station, which uh, you can see that it's got SFP cages there. Um, but they've got, I don't know if this is not it. This I have this. Thanks for Synology for sending that out. We're going to talk about that. But let's see here. Synology 10 gig Ethernet adapter RJ45. Uh, let's see here. You know what? Why are we using Bing? I feel like I need to go take a shower. Uh, let's see here. Um, Synology uh, PCI E network adapter. Which, by the way, you know, I really like Amazon for some things, but it really bothers me too. And I guess it shouldn't really bother me because I guess, I, I don't know, whatever. But like sometimes the way that Amazon is able to do some of these deals uh, with like Synology, they're, they're killing us. They're killing all the smaller guys. So I get it from that point, but that just means that I need to, that means that I don't need to blame my strategy on Amazon, that my strategy doesn't work. What that means is I need to come up with a new strategy to be able to beat Amazon. Right. So, and as good, <laughs> except for Amazon is under fire for, I don't know if you've seen the story. Let me, let me pull it up and we'll go back to the Synology thing, but Amazon, um, there was like a, a company where um, that was going to start uh, selling like uh, goods for, for mothers. Amazon kills baby goods company. And so what Amazon did, and I can't find it, it was just all over the news. What Amazon did was they took like a multi, multi, multi million dollar loss on products. So they, because they can do that. Uh, they took a huge amount of loss to basically kill this other startup. <laughs> and so, but here's the thing. Let's talk about this, right? So some of this, the calls that I get, let me pull up Amazon again here. And um, I'm going to pull this up so you can see it. Uh, Synology PCI card. Um, so they do have like this which has the, the empty cages. So you could use, excuse me, you could use a, a copper SFP uh, plus in here, or you could use a fiber SFP plus. You can also use compatible DAT cables, which DAT cables are amazing. Um, I love DAT cables um, that are pre-made. So um, there is this, and these, this does work, works very well. Um, we do use this in the larger rack stations. Um, but like if I come over here and I search for like grand, grand stream, UCM 6204, which by the way, I'll get you better, uh, pricing if you're buying an entire setup, but let's talk about this, right? So we'll go into this, like the grand stream UCM 6204 and let's see if they offer it here. So they used to have. Let's add this to our cart. Okay, four-year office, no, no thanks. Um, proceed to checkout. Okay, it's going to want me to sign in. So uh, for those of you who know where I'm kind of going with this, occasionally Amazon will offer professional installation services, professional installation services. And so I got a call from this, from this guy, and he went on to... Uh, the Amazon site, he buys a 6204 and uh, what uh, happens is Amazon sells him an installation service for like 199 bucks or some, some sort of crazy price, right? So this guy thinks that Amazon's going to send people out to his house. They're going to set up or his business, set up his UCM and everything is going to be peachy Kino, right? Well, 
what happens is it just covers the physical installation. So they literally come, they take it out of the box, they plug everything in and they walk away. That was their professional installation services. So as long as Amazon keeps doing things like that, um, those of us who are smaller um, consultants, we're going to stay in business. Don't worry about it because as good as Amazon's customer service is, you can't make mistakes like that. That's a huge, <laughs> that's a huge mistake. So, um, so no, uh, so I do have a laptop that is Linux. I do also have uh, Windows 10 and all that, that good stuff. So um, I can hear my wife is down here and I can hear the live stream and it looks like we're on the hunt for maple syrup, which means Willie needs to get in the shower and get dressed and um, kind of uh, probably answer some emails and get out of here for the morning. So I do want to thank you all for being here. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com. All of our Amazon affiliate links are down below. You don't feel pressured to use those, but it does, it does help out. It really does. So I want to thank you all for being here. I hope you have an absolutely awesome Saturday, awesome weekend. If you're in the States, enjoy your Labor Day. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.